Hello everyone, welcome back to Unmold Astrology channel. Now this video is about moon in the sixth house and then your Sarasati comes in or the Saturn's transit. So let's dive into the explanation part. Okay, so what if your moon, I'm sorry, I have a bad throat and a nose. <laughs> okay, so when you have moon, Every time, you know, this happens every time. I I just forgot, forget to, you know, go switch off that line segment, you know. Now, moon in the sixth house. So when Sarasati starts for an individual with moon in the sixth house, this is actually the most difficult placement. So a person who starts with moon, who starts Sarasati, having moon in the sixth house, this is going to be an absolute transformative time for you. These 7.5 years of Sarasati, the most transformative time for you. Because, you know, this Saturn is going to actually affect the areas which are very, very important for you. It's like, you are going to live so many years in these 7.5 years. You will feel like lots and lots of things are happening during this time to you. So when it will start, first when Saturn transits in your fifth house, that's your first phase. Second phase when Saturn is in the sixth house and the last phase when Saturn is in the seventh house so when saturn comes into the fifth house always we have talked it's the house of romance now you know it is actually coming 12th from the moon so do you think this romance is actually going to be very easy it is coming 12th from the moon and then it is activating the 12th, fifth house Fifth house is also investments. So what it can create is it's 12th from the moon, remember. And then it is also activating the fifth house with Saturn. It can give you losses through investments. I won't specifically see whenever Saturn comes into the fifth house, it activates investment. It activates investment into shares. It activates speculative mind and speculation. It doesn't mean it is going to give gains. It doesn't mean it is going to give losses. Gains and losses, we all only get to know about when we know additional information, like where the moon is, where the other placements are, how the fifth house is, how the fifth lord is. So here, initially, there can be extreme losses through investments or there can be expenses on either children or romantic encounters or investments like someone your business required for you to invest into a studio or into some decoration it's a decorative thing or into some you know something so it is going to be expenditure over investments children or romantic encounters now this Saturn, since it's 12th from the moon, it is going to actually be very heavier on your mind. There would be expenditure that is required to be made due to circumstances, but that would actually feel very heavier on your mind. So subconsciously, you might not feel good about it. One more thing it is going to activate is your spirituality plus your knowledge experience because fifth house is of education and knowledge and 12th from moon activates the 12th house which is our subconscious which is your spirituality so it's like your intuition especially is going to be on uh, the higher side during this time your intuition is going to help you a lot with all the things in your life now fifth house is also about one's creative self-expression and 12th from moon also activates one's creativity. So this time is very, very creative for you. One thing you need to see is that Saturn 
is the planet of restriction. It is the planet of boundary. Wherever it goes, it is going to set boundaries in that house. That means this area is now into some boundary. And with boundary also comes in what? I always say focus and determination. So your focus actually would want to be into this fifth house matters in your first phase. And rather this Saturn would want you to be focused, determined towards the fifth house matters. If you are a student, this Saturn can actually disturb your pattern of learning or pattern of uh, knowledge or your studies. It can disturb your studies because of a romantic encounter. So be very careful. For some time, put that romantic encounter on the side and concentrate on your exams, on your education. I've seen many times I've seen actually what happens in Prashna when Saturn transits in the fifth house and I am doing a Prashna. Most of all, those are the people who get to me and they complain that I'm unable to concentrate on my exam and most of all it is a competitive exam and their reason is that there's something that is going on within my mind I keep on thinking about the past I keep on thinking about my partner so you have to actually find a balance otherwise the Saturn can actually delay your education it can delay your exams or it can delay the results it can be it can give you dissatisfactory results with your exams so this is something you need to be careful of fifth house saturn can create it can actually uh, play out with the actual childbirth for an for a female for a male it's just about the initiation of the process of childbirth for the fifth house females it's like they have gone through the process of pregnancy when saturn was in the fourth house now in the fifth house it's more about now the child is in the life and they have to take the responsibility of the child. And then the fifth house is also about speculation. So definitely a person would want to invest into shares, but go for long term shares or long term investments. Do not go for short term investments. Otherwise, you will end up facing losses. OK, now the, from the fifth house, the third aspect is on the seventh house. So lots of hard work and lots of uh, courage like situations which would arise because of the marriage or because of partnership and you would have to deal with it. Se seventh aspect is on the uh, to 11th house. So definitely recognition is going to be there. And this is also seventh from moon. So it is like recognition through large population, large number of people. So definitely a promising time for your talents to surface and get recognized. And there's support from larger populations as well. Then the 10th aspect goes into the second house. So always with the 10th aspect of Saturn, there's some karma associated. So either they're a karmic situation with the family. And you know what? I have seen many times that when Saturn comes into the fifth house and you are already in a relationship and you're leading towards marriage, you would want to fight. Uh, or you would have to, you know, just uh, go into that stubborn zone with your family and you have to tell them that, yes, I want to marry this person. And there's some riftness with between you and your family. There's some distance for some time. Then you convince them, they get convinced and then the marriage happens. So this kind of scenario also I've seen play playing out when Saturn is transiting in the fifth house. And also you have to see the fifth Lord, how it is placed, seventh Lord, how it is placed. So there are so many things, but on a general level this might create this situation okay then the 10th aspect is on the second house second house is also about your wealth it's about your income so there's karmic situation with the income and wealth you have to work hard towards creating wealth and for that you might have to use the fifth house matters that is your knowledge that is your skills, that, your, that is your creative self-expression and that is also your passion. So your hobbies, your passion, that is what you're going to use to create or generate money. And that money could be a lifetime money. 
Okay, so that's something with Saturn transit in the fifth house. Now, Saturn is going to travel over your moon. Now, this is actually a very, very traumatic time, I would say. I'm not going to lie here, but this can be a very traumatic time for these individuals with moon in the sixth house. Because sixth house, moon is already conflicted, right? It's a house of conflict. It is a house of debt. It is a house of calculations. These people are, you know, I have not seen people. <clears throat> I have not seen the, I, you know, people with the moon in the sixth house, the most service, service oriented individuals. I've not seen anyone more service oriented than them. They are so much at service and they are willing to sacrifice themselves for that service. Right. But but still, they do have some negative sides to it. They are very debateful. They are very conflicted. They are ready to always fight and have an argument. They are very, conf uh, you know, um, they're very um, argumentative. So they are very competitive as well. So all of these negative things are there, but they are very generous as well. Very generous individuals. So you will see when Saturn is transiting over your moon and then it is transiting in the sixth house, these people would have to like have fights of lifetime. It's like a lifetime of a situation, a lifetime of a conflict they have to deal with. These conflicts can even be at their workspace. It can relate to the money. It can be related to their dignity. It can be about, and for that time, these people just become very practical. So many things in their life happen in their surroundings that just make them go towards that rude practical zone where they are forced to give a competition they are forced to protect themselves they are forced to be heavy on everyone so this can actually be a time which can have so many things in their life you know with moon in the sixth house uh, and then saturn coming over it definitely there is going to be some money dispute that is going to come around there is going to be disputes within the relatives as well because sixth house is the house of relatives so a distance you start distancing yourself emotionally from everyone you know saturn sadesati is already it's 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 like highs and lows with your moon, highs and lows with your state of moon and with your emotions. So when this time actually comes in for this particular individual, it's like the graph is so high and so low, right? Then these people always also, also they have health issues. They start developing health issues where they are forced to have a strict diet they have, are forced to have a good digestive you know system to look after that to good have to have good nutrition within their food and all of that but this is a very concerning placement this is a very concerning time these people just are surrounded by one problem after another right but the good thing is the more the more uh, i know this is very very you know, this is not practical at all, but the more calm and composed they are, the more maturely they deal with their conflicts, the more maturely they, uh, you know, they understand where they should speak, where they should argue and where they uh, have to keep quiet. The more they understand this, the more their life gets better. So that is something these people need to do. And before the Saturn even enters your sixth house, what you need to do is you need to be disciplined and focused towards your sixth house matters. If you have any debts, try to pay them off. Or even if you have, you know, right now, suppose when Saturn was in the fifth house, you took a education loan. And right now, this is not the time for you to pay it off. So what you need to do before Saturn transiting into the sixth house, you need to set aside a, some amount in terms that you are going to pay that off in the future. So start setting aside some amount in the form of giving towards your debt, even though you're not paying it off right now, but set it aside. If you have the opportunity of paying it off, just pay it off. Do not ask for money from anyone. Do not lend money to anyone or otherwise you are going to stuck in the get stuck into, into this loop for 2.5 years. Also be disciplined with your digestive system. Be disciplined with your routine. 
in routine how much you're working see is this is an artha house so it means that you have to work on daily basis so as to earn something right so you will have to work daily you would have to spend you know it is coming over your moon you have to like spend 24 uh, you know out of 24 hours you might you might have to spend 15 hours just working right that kind of workaholic it makes you and also these disputes actually act as a positive motivation for your career right because when saturn is going to transit in the seventh house it is going to give you larger op opportunities you know greater opportunities for business for work okay so when saturn is in the sixth house the third aspect goes into the eighth house so there's a lot of hard work you have to do if suppose there is an in some insurance money there's some investment money that you are about to receive you have to make a lot of effort something or the other is going to happen and you have to make efforts towards getting it then it is also about relocation so if you are you know deciding to relocate sixth house is also about visa applications on prs and all the legal stuff so if you're planning to you know relocate somewhere you're going to get visa for somewhere it can get delayed for some while and you have to put in so much efforts for that then the 12th house it gives seventh aspect on the 12th house it, it receives support from foreign governments from ashrams from um, you know institutions foreign institutions so it can be helpful in travel but it is not going to be like that you're going to travel in one go there are going to be opportunities but they are going to get fulfilled with some delay then the 10th aspect is going to be on the second house one second in the sixth house the tenth aspect is actually going to be in the third house so the third house and tenth aspect it can actually make you work really really hard towards being recognized within your society or you would have to work hard towards your actions to be recognized because third house is about your actions and 10th house is about working hard 10th aspect is about working hard or it is a karmic uh, karmic aspect so that means there's some karma associated with the third house matters like your neighbors relatives close relatives or close friends or your actions so your actions are going to give you the results instantly it's like instant karma you are going to receive also with that your actions will be you know your results will be very much dependent on your actions okay then the Saturn is going to come into the seventh house. So this can actually initiate marriage for an individual who is not already married. Because, you know, marriage is also initiated when Saturn is in the fifth house. But if suppose you are married, when Saturn comes into the seventh house, it can actually, you know what Saturn does here? It creates a boundary here. So with your spouse, with your the person you're married with, there's going to be some boundaries. Because Saturn wants you to focus towards only marriage. But you know what Saturn does? Wherever it goes, it is it gives you distractions there. Saturn coming into the seventh house, it is going to give you extra marital affair. I've not seen, not even, uh, you know, seen it once, twice, thrice. I've seen it like in hundreds of charts. Whenever someone comes to me and they tell me that their partner is cheating on them, or there is someone who comes to me and they say that I want to get rid of my partner and I and because I like someone else, there's always Saturn transiting in the seventh. And you know what this Saturn does? This Saturn is actually trying to test you. This is trying to test you how truthful you are, how deserving you are for a marriage. It is going to give you, you know, what not. It is going to give you so much of opportunities to connect with other people. We, what do we always say? Saturn in the second house, there's a distance with people. The, or people are always judgmental definitely people are going to be judgmental towards you but also people are first of all you will you will have someone in your life who is attracted towards you and you are attracted towards them so it is going to give you an affair and because this affair happens there is going to be criticism or judgment 
because of this, your marriage is also going to get affected. So it's not that always people choose to have an affair, but it's just that the opportunity comes in there. If you accept that, Saturn is going to definitely ruin your marriage. If you are not going to accept that, then this Saturn is going to give you the greatest time in your marriage. It is going to build in such a strong foundation of your marriage that it is going to lead towards a truthful and long-term marriage. Right? But you have to, because Saturn, this is a planet which is going to give you results based on your karma, your decision. So you, it is must, it is actually dependent on you. If you decide to stick to what is yours already, then it's for your for you for whole of the lifetime. But if you do not, then definitely there's the karma that is going to play out. Right? So this Saturn always tests the other individual. And let me tell you that it is not necessary that it will always destroy your marriage because Saturn goes retrograde wherever it is there for 2.5 years and it, it goes for about two times it does go retrograde. One in the beginning, most of all, one in the end. All It can even be in the middle. But it does go retrograde. When it goes retrograde, what does it activate? It activates the sixth house. It activates 12th placement from it. And then it is going to give you that pressure of Sarasati, the peak phase of Sarasati again. That is the time you'll have the conflict. So Saturn in the seventh house and you have an affair, you are going to get caught. Definitely you're going to get caught. That's why the dispute will arise. That's why the problems within the marriage will arise. But only your decisions are going to tell you that only your decisions are something which is dependent, you know, on which the result is dependent, right? I'm sorry for the words. I'm just fumbling that up. Okay. So one more thing. See, the third aspect is on the ninth house. Ninth house is what? Your higher learning, your morals. It's your teachers. So you have to work hard towards what? Your morals. Your morals are getting tested. Your, your higher self is getting tested here. So you have to work hard towards the ninth house matters. So that's why all of these are tested towards this, you know, because of this situation. Then the seventh aspect is on the first house. You yourself are your major support at that time. No one else is going to support you. Only you are going to support yourself at that time. Definitely there is judgments. There is criticism. There is, you know, that tirchi eye, you know, of Saturn from the seventh house that you're receiving from people. But it's you who can change everything. You can support yourself. So the support comes from within. Then the 10th aspect, which is on the 4th house, your home environment gets disturbed. You need to work hard to feel at peace. And also if we talk about monetary terms, it can actually initiate a long-term partnership business. And fourth house, tenth aspect, it means that you're going to receive support from your homeland or mother or mother-like figure. And also it, it would says that you have to work hard towards creating peaceful environment and also comforts for yourself. Okay, so whenever Saturn transits in the seventh house, so you know, only when Saturn transits in the seventh house, it has these results. And think that you, it is on top of it, it is your Sarasati. I remember a case I had a long time ago. This person had Sarasati with the, because the moon was in the seventh house. So peak phase of Sarasati. Saturn come traveling into, into, you know, transiting in the seventh house. So that's the second, second thing that's happening. Third thing, Saturn Mahadasha that is happening. 
So this person was surrounded by all the things you can think of right now. So that's why I just told them that rather than just, you know, holding your head and thinking that what wrong is happening with me, why it is happening with me, just retrospect your actions. See what, where you are, you, ha, you know, where have you done wrong? Where have you been wrong? What can you do now? How you can be responsible towards your marriage? How can you be responsible towards yourself? Because the, their moon was actually in the seventh house. So whenever Saturn comes here, this can be a very tricky placement. It can be a good and with Saturn, it, it's, it's always there. You know, it can be good or it can be bad. But our actions matter the most to the Saturn, to Saturn because Saturn is karma dhish. It gives you results according to your karma. Right? So that's what results you can expect in your Sarasati if you have moon in the sixth house. So whenever you're going to start with your Sarasati, just know that these are the uh, houses where Saturn is going to transit. Just mend those houses. Just be focused just be disciplined towards that houses and you are good to go. Okay. So guys, this was my analysis about Saturn transit for moon in the sixth house. I hope this is helpful. If you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share. And if you guys would like to have your personal readings, please check out the link below www.unmoleastrology.com and under the reading section, you can book a personal reading for yourself. Under the unique reading section, you can book a unique reading for yourself. See you with the next video. Bye-bye. Take care.